enjoy yourself. All right, thank you. Thank you. And hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Michelle McConaughey. I'm the Senior Vice President of Customers at Rocket Space. Um, I'll tell you a bit about us and more about the ecosystems that are critically important to corporations and startups. But first, I thought I'd start with giving you a sense of what we at Rocket Space The most Space interesting are. journeys always venture Ooh. into the unknown. The routes they follow are often long and full of unexpected twists and turns. Lift off. We have a lift off. They go places scary and daunting. The outcomes are never certain. This is the path of the innovator. Of course, nowadays, it seems entrepreneurs are on every corner. Everyone wants to give it a shot. But the reality is, few succeed. In fact, most never even make it off the launch pad. Over the years, we've learned a few things about those who do. We understand what innovation actually requires. We are a different kind of space program. We do more than just accelerate businesses. Speed is a critical part of what we enable, but it's only one factor. We provide the world's top innovators with something else, direction. That combination of speed and direction is core to our vision. Because in the world of rocketry, velocity is often what determines whether a rocket reaches its destination or not. There are intrepid companies out there that are transforming the world around us in mind-bending ways. They feel it's not just about doing bigger things, it's about accomplishing things that have a bigger impact. Developing their technologies and growing their businesses isn't a lifestyle, it's their life's work. We find and work with these undaunted thinkers and doers all over the globe. People who work with meaning and purpose. People who are undertaking the most astonishing journeys. We provide them with velocity. And with velocity, they, like us, boldly go. So I always uh, get excited when I watch this video. A little fun fact on me, my dad worked for General Electric for 35 years in the aerospace division, and I grew up be wanting to be an astronaut. And when I got to physics and calculus in college, that dream failed. But I can assure you now, it's actually come reality, being part of Rocket Space. So I actually founded the corporate program at Rocket Space, and I have been a corporate innovator and a startup innovator for over 10, now almost 15 years. So I'm going to share today on the front lines of working with now over 170 corporations around the world and with thousands of startups. The evolution of the dual-sided marketplace, how has this come to be the new path forward for startups and corporates? But also, what are some of the emerging models that corporations are pursuing and how should startups really think about how that might affect them? And then, of course, next practices. I like to say next because best is only best if it's good for you. Next is really thinking about what might be something new that you'll pursue. And I'll highlight five really important, hopefully, takeaways that you'll take from today's discussion. So first, rocket space. I come from Silicon Valley, a long 22-hour journey yesterday, but a fantastic journey to come to Slovenia and see the startup ecosystem here that exists and the corporate ecosystem that exists today. I'm delighted to be here. We are at rocket space essentially an ecosystem of people and ideas. We are the platform for scale and for growth for the top startups and the best corporations in the world. As you can see up here, we have a couple of images from our new campus in London. We started in Silicon Valley six years ago in San Francisco. During your uh, tour to Silicon Valley, you may have seen Rocket Space. Now we are physically coming to Europe, and first uh, stop is in London. Um, our ambition, though, is much greater than just here. It is to reach the world. Um, we already, in our, 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 uh, our corporate practice, we've reached thousands upon thousands of startups across the world to help them, wherever they are, reach, reach corporations. But now physical campus, Rocket Space, will go well beyond San Francisco. We open London June 1st. We're excited to come to Europe and to be part of this amazing community. We also are opening our first China location, Shenzhen, um, in a week. So we have 12 locations. You'll see many of them up here in development by the end of 2017. That'll be up and running. And we 
expect to go across the world to be the platform for startups and for corporations to really um, create the ecosystem where both can thrive and grow. And what gives us this credibility? Well, when it comes to startups, our startup campus, we went out on a mission six years ago to really create an ecosystem where startups were a product of their environment, that we weren't going to just take anybody and everybody, but that we were going to focus our, our, our whole mission on the scale-up piece, helping startups scale up. So when you come to Rocket Space, it's an application process, but you can be there for as long as you need. And that means that you have to have funding, you have to have product, you have to have customers. And from those applications, we cherry pick the best startups from across the world to come to our campus in San Francisco. And we'll carry this mission forward throughout the world is to really, again, focus on the seed to series C stage of growth for a company, the scale up piece, the critical piece to helping a startup that's got a business, but how do they make it a platform? How do they make it a, a really disruptive um, new world? Tra uh, Travis and Uber were on our campus six years ago, eight people as a very small company that has disrupted the world. Many other amazing startups, including Spotify, Supercell, and many others, have called Rocket Space home. We're incredibly proud of the ecosystem and also the growth that they've created um, in, their, in their startup companies. We saw some of the emerging technologies like blockchain, artificial intelligence, some of the first chatbots were actually at Rocket Space. We've seen some of these emerging technologies come to our campus first. And seeing the future before it hit really created another path, which about four years ago was our corporate path. So since then, we've created what we call the dual-sided marketplace. And how do you help corporates and startups really create tangible benefit? None of this kind of, we call it the petting zoo, right? You go and you see all the pretty startups and you pet them all, but then you never do anything with them. And what we try to create and really transform is that corporates can provide a lot more than money. They can provide a lot more than just a relationship, that there's a lot of power in what startups have to offer, and corporates can get a lot out of that. And on the startup side, they, the IPO path is really, really tough. Not a lot of startup companies will get to that state, but there's a lot of amazing other opportunities along the journey of becoming a great startup that a corporation can be a critical piece of. And so we see this amazing marketplace, and this conference essentially shows us that this is a new and emerging market um, between them. On our campuses, we've touched over 1,000 startups from the beginning. We've had over 18 unicorns. So the power of an ecosystem is creating an environment where the best of best can thrive. $21 billion has been raised by the companies that have been to Rocket Space Campus. Beyond our campus, though, in places like Sylvania and across the world, our, our virtual network, so startups that are applying to be part of our community, come from all over the world to work with our corporate partners and to get tangible benefit. Also, our campus is very international and has been from day one, is that 40% of the companies that are at Rocket Space, because we're in that seed to series C stage, actually hail from all parts of the world. We have so many amazing relationships with uh, you know, European countries, as well as startups like Spotify, who came from uh, Sweden, founded in Sweden, but when they made their US market entrance, came to Rocket Space for that critical scale up piece. One very important statistic that I'm very proud of is that you'll see how different we as a company are. We actually have a lot of the graduates from 500 startups, so our, our, our node was speaking this morning. Um, many of the graduates from Techstars, 500, Plug and Play, all of these other incubators and accelerators actually come to Rocket Space after they go through those programs as part of their scale-up journey. So that's really where we're different. And again, cherry-picking the best. But the real compelling statistic is that 92% of the startups that have come through Rocket Space in the last six years are either still in existence today, growing and scaling, or they have been acquired by a corporate. And we are very, very proud of that statistic. Again, it shows to the power of a really great ecosystem that you, your startup, your corporate, can be a, part, a product of an environment. So the evolution of the dual-sided marketplace has come because there's been a lot of momentum shift. And I'll talk about it from the corporate angle first. Mm, it's not working. Oh, there we go. Um, and really, this is where corporations now are going from industrial to digital. There's not even becoming digital. They have to be digital as of now. Industries like energy, industries like, like manufacturing, 
Um, and I would say, you know, media. So every, every industry in the world must think of themselves in a digital way. That being their old self will not be able to power them in the future. And every, every corporate knows this, but do they really embrace it? I would say a great example of this shift is General Electric. Um, really, they've shifted themselves into being from a, a, a company focused on the physical things now to beyond the, phys the physical things. And every corporation should be looking at companies like them. Look at the Amazons, the Googles, the Facebooks. I call them the modern day corporates. Their heritage is in startup, but they are powerhouses now that monopolize a lot of the Fortune 500 and a lot of the, the market capitalization. These are companies that have always thought of themselves as digital. And if they haven't thought of themselves as digital, they really have transformed themselves. So a lot of corporations play the game of, uh, you know, I got innovation. <laughs> and then today in some of the sessions, the people were sharing that the innovation game for corporates has been a rather tough one. You know, corporations have said, yes, uh, innovation, of course I have innovation. I have an innovation team. I have crowdsourcing. I have an innovation officer. I have a lab. Silicon Valley, I've been to it. I have a presence there. Um, hackathons, I mean, you name it, right? But I think the real thing that we all need to step back and think about, especially if you're corporate, is are you really driving greater outcome? Is it really moving the needle? Or is this just a game of, of speak? And I think that's where, you know, corporations really need to challenge themselves. And startup also, startups need to think, this is a massive opportunity for me to really, you know, take my innovation somewhere where I can scale it. And so we believe at Rocket Space that the new innovation world order is that corporates need startups. It is an essential piece of growth. But also, startups need corporations. There is no way that both parties, they, they can't exist in a silo. Ecosystem between them is essentially what's going to drive them both to be very successful. But the big thing is that velocity. So we, we uh, shared in our video, is that's the differentiator. What speed can you get and what direction can you take in order to really drive your startup or your corporate forward? You need to really think about, are you doing all you can to get the right amount of speed you need and the right amount of direction to take your startup or your corporate to the next level. And so what I'll share now is a bit on the emerging models, and I'll look at it from the corporate side. I'll make some bold statements, don't boo me. If you have tomatoes, don't throw them up here. <laughs> but I think it's important to really show the shift. When we talk about the indus indus industrial to digital movement, it comes from the fact that innovating at the pace that corporates were innovating at is just not a game that they can win anymore. They can't even compete. And that just goes to show we, from the, all the disrupted industries and sectors that have, been, that have gone through a tremendous change in the last 10 years. And it starts with every corporation, of course, has a tremendous portfolio of opportunities, lots of things and ideas they're pursuing. And typically, companies before would invest 95 to 100% of their innovation efforts internally. Some might be more extreme. They might actually do a lot more with external innovation, but I would say a majority, while they might be inspired when it comes down to implementation, stays within the internal buckets. And typically, the, the kind of distribution, this comes from a, a, a model, the Horizon 1, 2, and 3 model, so this has been published, that 70% of your innovation efforts before were really focused on incremental, 20 on adjacencies, so what things, new businesses, new models am I creating, and then 10% on um, disruptive, so just next generation opportunities. What we believe at Rocket Space is that if you're a corporation and that you are not completely shifting this towards external, that you are out for disruption in the next five to ten years, without a doubt. It doesn't matter what industry and sector you're in. Um, you know, things that we thought were protected are no longer protected. And so our whole belief is that 80% of your external innovation efforts must be or of your innovation efforts must be focused externally. That means startups are going to be the catalyst for massive opportunity. 10% needs to be focused on your incremental, which is your core, but we say the rest of it needs to be focused on adjacencies and disruptions because many corporations, and they know who they are, they can't even keep up, they have to leapfrog. So why improve what's at the core when you know it's not gonna work anymore? when you know there's already a 1,000 startups out there working to disrupt your business model. 
why not think about how you're going to not only work with them, but how you're going to help your own organization work with them to, to, to be a, a main player, to stay relevant. And that's where we see the massive shift, shift happening. So corporate to startup models, I thought I'd share a bit on, I would say, what are the new kind of ways that corporates are approaching this? Um, when it comes to, there's all, always been the traditional accelerator, you know, come work with me, a startup, so I'm open for business. Um, those models have failed. A lot of them have failed. Not many have uh, gotten a long to longevity. You know, a CFO, a new CFO comes around, typically it's one of the first things that's cut, <laughs> unfortunately. But there's some other models that are emerging. So the first one is stealth mode. And so from a corporate perspective, companies are looking at themselves in a very different way and attacking the startup community by way of finding new startups that are transformative to their space and that are, that are things that are not even in their industry and sector. What I would say for startups, this is a massive opportunity that, you know, I'll give an example. We worked with, with many corporations, as I shared, over 170 of them. And I would say, um, you know, there's a big logistics company we work with. And in, in talking to them, they're like, Michelle, you know, we, we know a lot about logistics, but we see ourselves shifting into the healthcare space. So what can we do with the startup community in the healthcare space? And I said, you know, you sit back and you think, you go, wow, no startup would have ever thought that this corporate would ever be shifting into that space. And so what I say here is, you know, there are, for a startup, if you're a startup, there are a lot of opportunities beyond the typical players that you should be thinking about. I would also advise you, look at the financial statements of companies. I, I actually was an auditor in my past life, so I, I for some reason, actually like doing that. But look at the, like, shareholder reports and the financial statement and, the, and the, really the meaning behind what they're reporting out to shareholders. Because you're going to get to know a lot about the company and the trajectory of the company, and where could your product service um, startup really um, help them. Beyond stealth mode, there's a new emerging model, the corp, um, the, the, the coopetition, or the uh, we call it the coopetition, so a cooperation of corporates. So this is where many corporates are coming together, saying, you know what, the problems that we have are bigger than just us. They are. The, the problems of the industry. And we together must solve this, otherwise we're all out of business. And so we actually at Rocket Space have pioneered many different platforms on the future of logistics, the future of food and agriculture, the future of mobility, the future of retail, and many others that are, com that are coming, that we're launching. And this is where we get a value chain of corporations together. So while I, while I believe in a future where corporations that are competitive will actually sit next to each other, because I bet you if we put a couple of the big taxi companies into a room and said eight years ago or seven years ago, would you have wanted to know about Uber, Uber and work with Uber? They all would have played together. Well, I don't know if that reality is going to happen very soon. We still can work along a value chain. So, for instance, in our future logistics program, we have companies like Volkswagen, Lufthansa. We have companies like Ingram Micro and many others that are working alongside each other who have various pieces of the logistics chain. And they are saying to the market, we all know that smart warehouses, smart transport, smart trade are all issues. But startups around the world, the best in class startups, if you're pilot ready, if you have an opportunity to solve these problems, we want to work with you. And as a startup, those types of programs are really meaningful for you. Why? You get more than just one corporate that you're hitching your post to. You have many corporates. And then also getting many outcomes pilots, really testing with these corporates. These are the new emerging models that we're seeing and very important to really realizing the opportunity that is startup to corporate innovation. So last, I thought I would share with you from the front lines, what are really the top five things that we see that both corporates and startups need to think about and really need to perfect. First is building the house. A corporation should have an effective way to work with startups. If you're a corporate right now and you don't have a way to, to get a startup through to partnership, you should stop meeting startups. It's a waste of your time, it's a waste of their time. And for startups, if you see and start working with a corporate where you're getting into this black hole, you really need to think to yourself, is this the right investment of my time? Know when to pull the plug. It's very important that a corporate builds a house to work effectively with startups. And so what that means is the right policies, the right procedures, you know, the right agreements with legal and all of the key kind of risky, risk-adverse players in the organization. 
having those things worked out is very important to the speed factor, which, you know, we talked about. Second, and this has been mentioned a couple times, is that know your intent and your intentions. I would say, um, and I think in the fireside chat earlier today, we talked about this, is that many times the breakdown is never, is not at, at the interest or even the start of the conversation. The breakdown is when you get to piloting and experimenting, a corporate realizes really what the startup wants. And then the startup realizes what the corporate has to offer, and then they say, okay, well, why did I invest all these hours and time if I didn't know that this is what you wanted? So it's really important to outline those things up front. There are many startup players in the market. There are many corporates in the market. So you find the right ones for each other is, is critically important. And nailing down your intent and your intentions will get you there that much faster. Third is to turn on your sonar. And the sonar is what in your, not even just in your backyard, but around the world is happening in the, in the startup space if you're a corporate. And as a startup, what's happening in the corporate world in your space? Really important to always stay in tune with what's happening and what's shifting. The speed at which technology is increasing the pace of innovation is unprecedented. We all know this. So that's why it's even more important to stay in the know and be, really have your sonar turned on to know what startups are emerging, what corporates are shifting, and how can you play between. Fourth, tap into ecosystems near and far. Meaning, there's an incredible ecosystem here. There's incredible ecosystems all around the world when it comes to startup activity. But how do they know about where you are, and how do you take what you have where you are and spread that out across the world? You know, we at Rocket Space knew that this was a global startup ecosystem from day one. While we were physically always in San Francisco, we touched thousands of startups across the world because while we had that startup portfolio of companies inside our walls, we don't take equity. We actually, as I said, start up, you know, we, start, we uh, focus on the scale-up market. But there's thousands upon thousands of best-in-class startups that are not located in San Francisco. And that now, you know, we over the past four or five years have helped them effectively scale through working with the best corporates. And now as we grow our physical campus, we can now provide more physical co-location for these startups as well. But these ecosystems are all around the world, so I, I would recommend get to know these ecosystems, understand who the main players are, and, and be a part of them if you can. And then five, um, I would say don't do it alone. You know, startups, uh, you, know, you, you know firsthand that leveraging each other's experiences um, can help propel to the next level. That's why conferences like these are so important to the growth of your companies. Um, also, corporations, don't do it alone. There are so many out there that are on the same journey in different industries, in different sectors. And the power of knowledge between the two worlds is what's really going to be um, a transformational opportunity for you as a startup or for you as a corporation. So with that, we always say, boldly go. It's now your time to boldly go and work as a, a startup to transforming yourself into, into scale. Um, by tapping into ecosystems, by t leveraging the power of, of corporations as a wonderful path to getting not only validation, but scale. And now corporations, you know, corporates, you have a massive challenge on your hands to keep up with the massive kind of tide, the tide of change that's happening. But you have the resources, you have this, the ability, the funds. Um, I always laugh when corporates say, I don't have money and I don't have people. <laughs> Startup never says that, <laughs> and they're the ones that truly don't. Um, so what I'd say is you boldly go and, and take this challenge forward. This is a massive market opportunity, not just here, but around the world. And around the world also needs to know about here. And so I look forward to speaking with you later today. Um, if uh, you know, you're around, and I'll be here tomorrow as well. Um, but thank you for your time. Michelle, thank you. <clears throat> We're somewhat over time, so what we'll do is I'll give you 20 seconds to answer the question. How yeah, about that? Oh, okay, I can because, do rapid fire. <laughs> um, so the first one is, what are the main requirements to enter the campus? What's that? I'm sorry. What are one? the main requirements to enter your campus? Yes, so it's like got to be funding. You have to be seed to Series C. You have to have a product or service that's cooked, and you have to have customers.
Got it. Thank you. That was short and sweet. And the last one is, which we have time for, is how is Rocket Space monetized? Corporations yeah. pay a fixed amount, or does Rocket Science get some sort of a share? Yeah, so we do not take equity, and I shared this a bit um, in startups. So we focus on um, it's a membership fee. So when you come to our campuses, you pay a fee, and that includes the services and the space that we provide. Um, from a corporate perspective, you pay for the services and the space as well. Um, so it's, a, it's truly a services uh, layer model, no equity stake in any of the startups on our campus or the virtual network we've created, um, or you know, corporations, it's a, it's, a, it's a services model. Thank you very much, Michelle. Okay, great, thank, thank you, you very everybody. much. Cheers.